It's raining. It's raining. It's supposed to be. It's raining. Sprinkle. It's raining hard. It ain't raining hard. It's raining. It ain't gonna be raining up there. That's just here. Well, at least it's not cold. I'd take rain over cold any day. The stuff we dealt with at the beginning of the year was ridiculous. His truck's in the way. Finna go wipe him up. No, dude, let's just leave him. Hey, I can't go. Well, it'd be awesome if we just leave him. Let him wake up about 9 o'clock. Then I can call him on the phone and say, Where you at, Matt? You, at, you on the water yet? Like he does me every day. No, Good morning, Elwood. Well, I'm glad you're quick. finally up. Sleeping in all day. Is it raining? Yeah. Well, oh, that's the way to go. Everybody's been wondering, what's that thing? That's an iPad now. I saw it on my boat last year. Like, what is that? It's a 12 inch iPad. Keep some other maps in there. Google Earth. It's a RAM. Makes this little deal. And then I bought, I had one of this arm. I had this arm in the garage actually. But I bought this plastic piece on Amazon. And then I had one of these in my garage. I just mounted it to the bottom of the Boat Logics mount. Tell everybody, tell everybody where we are. I'll Come in here. Come in here. Tell everybody where we are. Scott Canberra's house. Yeah. We're at Scott Canberra's house. And headed to Lay Lake. And I said I was leaving at 530 or 526. So I really got four minutes. I can sit here and chit chat with y'all. Yeah, four minutes. Come on. Come on, Canterbury. What you got? Thank you so much. Oh, dude. We can hit this. That's your workout. Work That's your workout. About five minutes to be done. Oh, it's good. No. If you about, go at it five minutes, half, that's a About a minute and a half, I'll be done. <laughs> you know what, for real, what a good workout is, is, is kicking it. Yeah. You sit back like when this boat's not here, and just kick it. Bam. I'd miss and hit that pole Crazy. right in my leg. Yeah. Is this the fourth tournament? Fifth tournament. Fifth tournament yeah. of the year. Of nine. We're over halfway after this one. Yeah, this is the halfway point right now. What's Lay Lake, Elite. Day one of practice. It's going to be a little bit of everything going on. Scott says it's going to be a little tough after about 9 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be tough. Isn't it? I mean, the whole tournament's going to be pretty tough. Yeah. When we're out of place and it takes 11, 12 pounds a day to make the top 50, that's tough fishing. I'm the first one out. I'm making note of this. I'm the first one out. I'm the first one out for practice. All right, we're here at uh, Beeswax Creek. This is this is where I qualified for the elites, guys. It's pretty cool. This is where I stood right here, with my stomach and knots, wondering if I made the the elites. And uh, I got confirmation standing right here in this parking lot that I qualified. We had our final tournament here at Lay Lake, and I caught them pretty good. It was a, that was a lot of fun. That was a really really great. Actually, if you want to see something cool, I, I encourage all of y'all to go back and look at the those videos from the opens. 2020 season, um, I believe it was 2020, maybe 2019, 2020. Awesome, especially the Lay Lake one. We caught a couple key fish there at the end, and uh, I'll tell you what, it was so much fun. So we're gonna put the boat in the water, hopefully find some of those big old spotted bass that are out here in this lake, and find some largemouth too. So Canterbury's already on the water. Matt's uh, putting in now as well. But uh, let's get after it, guys. I like this side of the river because it's shaded as well. You know, this side of here is going to have shade on it just a little longer than the other side. Let's see what we can come up with, old Lay Lake. Old buddy, old pal. Current's rolling, that's good. Oh, yeah. Come on, buddies. I love you. Let's see what we got going on. 
He's talking about Canterbury's talking about some kind of like long leaf pond weed or something. Oh, that's a good one. Wow. Oh, okay. Nice fish, dude. That was awesome. Thank you, buddy. Big one, dude. Three and a half pounder. Hey, before we get too far into the Lay Lake practice, because it's very important. It's a very important day on Lay Lake. I do have to share some great news for you and let you know that this video right here that you're watching is sponsored by Manscaped.com. That's right, Manscaped.com. I mean, they sent me a box and I'm very excited about it. Now I need your opinion on some things, so stick with me here. I, th we're gonna do a poll. We're gonna figure out some things that are very important to know. Uh, check it out, guys. Oh yes, this is the Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped. Now here is what's different. Okay, I have the Lawnmower 3.0 that I've been using for all my download business. Download business is important, but I don't wanna use download business up top for my up top business. My up top business is now gonna be my Beard Hedger Pro Kit. If you have a light beard like myself, okay, and potentially much more beard, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, or you have a big lusciousness of beard, this is the kit for you. You know, more than eight million men have trusted Manscaped for all these years now for all of their beard needs, trimming needs, shampoo needs. They even got boxers now. They've got all kind of cool things going on, and uh, they're not gonna disappoint, I'm sure, with this. Let's check this thing out, guys. There we go. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. Here's what I like about this thing right off the bat. It has the uh, adjustable beard trimmer here with the, with the height adjustments right here on the shaft. Look how that's rising up like that. See how that rises up and rises and goes down? That's awesome right there, okay? So that's gonna allow uh, you to adjust depending on the thickness of your beard. Now, here's the question. For all y'all that have been following the channel for all of these years, you know that I rocked a beard pretty hard for about two or three years thinking about bringing it back. My wife's kind of on the fence, she's not real sure, but I wanna know what you think. Should I bring the beard back? Because then I can use this thing on the road quite a bit as well. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is your aspiring beard, okay? So here's the deal, guys. This motor in this thing, 7,200 RPMs. That's that's more RPMs than my Yamaha SHO 250 because it only gets up like 6,200. So this is faster than the Yamaha Show. Titanium coated blades, this thing cuts hair in a single pass. So good battery, good ergonomical uh, grip. Everything's great with that. This thing is awesome. Let's go into the accessories. All right, guys, so you know beards can trap some oil, can get irritated, they can smell kind of funky. So Manscaped has their own shampoo. This stuff is awesome. Cleanses your beard. It's, it's just perfectly made. It's cruelty-free, paraben-free, sulfate-free, dye-free. It's even vegan. Manscaped also has a beard conditioner. This pampers your beard with nourishing oils and antioxidants to make it all silky smooth. This stuff smells amazing with its own proprietary blend. Okay, eucalyptus, rosemary, some other essential oils. This stuff is the bomb. Speaking of bomb, there is the beard bomb as well as the beard oil. So they have all that in this box. This kit is full of all kinds of cool stuff. Even have your own nice little beard brush to keep everything good. I don't quite need that right now, but I may. Build a magnificent beard is now much easier because of Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit. That's right. And all you have to do, save 20% off on this magnificent deal, is go to manscaped.com forward slash Scott Martin to save 20% and free international shipping. Oh my gosh, that's a mouthful. Okay, so we're gonna get back to the video because I know that's why you're here because we've got like work to do at Lay Lake. We've got to find the fish to win the tournament. So let's get back to it, guys. Drop some comments down below. Again, let me know, do I need to keep the beard or do I not? That's the question that needs to be answered. Oh, there's another big one. That was another four pounder, dude. That was a big one. 
I watched him just come up and go. How many bites you got? One. I've caught one. I had a couple roll on a spinner bait, but I don't even know what they were. There's a lot of gar. That's probably what they were. Yeah, I've had I've had two or three gar like uh, running up all over it. Yeah, I don't. I've been doing going down the bank nonstop. I've had two bites. Well, both of them were good though. One, one I didn't have my hook covered up, and he I didn't set the hook on him, but I, I he flopping around. I pulled him out of the grass. He was about a three and a half pounder. And then the, o- the other one was probably the same size or maybe just a hair bigger. It came up. I had a hook cover on, and it came up. I watched it just kind of slow motion eat it. And that was the only two bites I've had. But, like, how fast are you just keeping it right under the surface? Yeah. Yeah. Shaking it? Yeah. No, I don't shake it much, dude. Let's see what Matt's got. What you got? Oh, you're locked up. Oh, my gosh. Look at that thing. That's a big old. I love bellies like that. Looks like Canterbury. Looks like Canterbury last night. I told my buddies in high school. I said, "Big girls need love too." That's right. You gotta get. Gotta, she's not big though. Does she, that's the thing. Can you see how short? Oh my god! Look, how's that? How's that for perspective? Wow. <laughs> yeah, you didn't say you could do a really good trick photo of holding it way out there. Uh, five pounder. Two pounder. Yeah. Five pounder. Two pounder. That's funny. This looks good right here. This is water willow, is what they call it. And a lot of lakes around the country have this. And it mats up good like this. I mean, it's 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 matted up. It's right here where I'm sitting, it's four feet of water. But that's a decent canopy. These fish get in it for sure. There's one right there. There you go. No, dude. All right. That was a bite. I mean, I, I don't know how to catch. You know, all right, we'll figure this out, obviously. It takes three days to put together a game plan, but so far, I could do this all day if I keep getting bites. From what I hear, you don't get a ton of bites doing this, but they're typically a little bigger fish. I mean, that bite there, I don't know, you know, obviously how big it is. I didn't set the hook on him, but it felt good. I'm into the east yet. Yeah. Okay, well I'm going that way now. Well, that's okay. where that's where the majority of the big ones came from. That's like where Gary okay. caught them around that island. I caught them around that island. Another 34 okay, pound I'm, bag. I'm headed that way now. I'm about halfway there. So. Anyway, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Okay. All right. See you. Bye. That was a good one. That was a big one. Ah, he's a big one. And there would have been a big one back there. What's up, buddy? I love you, man. I love these dudes. These Coosa River spots. I tell you, I love smallmouth. But I really like these spots. They've been good to me over the years. They have been. It's not a real big one. Not a real big one at all.
Hey, buddy. Dude, they like the begging. And it's, nobody's throwing this one either. It's a different deal. They love the rogues here, and that's what I've caught them on in the past. And it's a, it's a different kind of a action. So it's a, it's a lazy, straight roll instead of like a twitch, twitch like the, a lot of the other ones, like the Guggen one and the Mega Bass. I mean, they, they're left, right, up, down. They're super erratic, and those are good, you know, obviously. But this is a different action, and for some reason, these fish like it here. Oh my gosh, it was a good one, dude. Yes. Golly, look at this tank, dude. That thing came right to the boat and hit it at the boat. I'm liking it a lot. That's a three pound fish, maybe? Let's see, just curious. Three pounder. That's a nice one, dude. Look at that. What? Thanks, buddy. Just, so I put bait pop on this thing like an hour ago, okay? I don't know if you can see this, but look at all the sparkle scales still in the bait. So I was wondering, like, how long does it last? It lasts a long time. I mean, on a hard bait, it lasts really good. It's all right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And one of the interesting thing that I've noticed is the amount of uh, scent that comes off. When I put this bait in the water, it was sitting there and literally you could see like the, the, the scent like coming off the bait. Like it was like an oil slick coming off this bait. So if it's coming off like that, when a fish gets behind it, right? And they get behind it, like they do a lot of times on these jerk baits, they follow. They're smelling that, 100% they're smelling that. So that's a big deal. You know, I, they, they developed this for sonar, but I'm going to tell you right now, when they decided to put the fish formula in there, game changer. I put fish okay. scent on my stuff all the time, and it always washes off. But this right here stays on there. The, the way it's so thick, it stays on there good. I was using this one right here. So I've only had to put it on one time. I can see my bait good. And look, you don't need much. I mean, you look at that small little tube, you think, oh... That's not a lot. I haven't run out of a tube yet. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Perfect. I don't know if you, hopefully you can see this coming off. Oh yeah, you can. Look, 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 look. See that, see that? Wow. Look at all that coming off. That. There's a lot of scent. See that in the water? It's like a little oil slick coming off this thing. All right, so as that jerkbait's going through the water, it's leaving a scent trail the whole time. So those fish come up behind it, they come up behind it, they smell it, it's an added strike enhancer, okay? Then you've got the sparkle scales, which are slowly falling off. I don't know, it's just good. I mean, I, I use it for the fish scent, probably more than I use it for the sonar now, just because of that reason right there. Um, and playing around with all these different colors is actually pretty cool. So, anyways, we're going to drop a link in the video. Bait Pop. Go get you a tube of it, okay? Maybe get three tubes. They have different colors, the blue, the green, and the silver. Probably be the three that I would start with. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 legit. Again, if you, if you like scent, you put scent on your worms, you put scent on your baits. This, because it's so thick, it really enhances those hard baits. Again, jerk baits, even a crank bait. Those fish track. They always follow behind the hard bait before they eat it. And if they can smell it, it's just, again, another 
thing that's going to help this fish kind of react to it and commit. So, anyways, bait pop, pretty cool. Still kind of learning all the little nuances with it, but impressive. Oh, dang, dude. All right. Is that all she wrote, fellas? You know, uh, all in all, not a bad start to the practice. You know, I got a few bites this morning, five actually. And I think those were most of all largemouth. And then I caught another limit of fish out doing jerk baits and stuff. So, you know, either one of the bags. I think the largemouth would have weighed more. But the spots weren't too bad. I think I'd have had maybe, I don't know, 12, 13 pounds. You know, it's just hard to say what it's going to take, right? I mean, to win the tournament, I'm going to need more than that. I'm going to need 15, 16. But I think if I add everything I did today, I'd have had a good bag. Can I do that four days in a row? I don't know. I mean, you know, hopefully tomorrow I'll find another little stretch of some uh, morning fish. You know, I've got that one stretch. It'd be nice to find an area that I feel like I can catch a lot of fish quick, you know, four or five. And uh, if we can find that, that'd be special. And spend the rest of the day frogging and jerk baiting. Way to, way to maybe win this thing. We got a lot of work ahead of us though. So, you know, it's like, I gotta get up in the morning, day two of practice, I need to find another stretch that has a few fish on it. And I'm gonna do that every day. So I've got two more chances to find a better stretch than what I found this morning. Cause what I found this morning, I mean, there was a couple fish there, but I don't think there's a huge population. So can I get a bite there? Probably, but I don't think I can catch five there. And I don't think I can catch fish there multiple days. Might even have to like change it up. So. That's really what I need to do. Get up in the morning. I'm gonna look at. I'm looking at my map right now on the iPad. I'm just trying to like pick out some places that might look good. Um, the flipping bite is a big deal as well. So there's just a lot of things going through my mind right now. You know, and here's the, here's the best tip I can give you when you're practicing for a tournament is just don't make your mind up yet. Like my mind's not made up. I don't know what I'm, I'm gonna do. I got bites today, but that doesn't mean that's what I'm gonna do for the tournament. I need to keep an open mind and let some more opportunities kind of transpire so on uh, Canterbury he's excited he got I don't know 15 or 20 bites today Matt Matt said he struggled a little bit maybe only five or six bites all day so um we're gonna get in the morning to do it again though but listen I really appreciate you guys hanging out listen I know there's a lot of content out there you can watch and uh so if you guys watching my videos it's super awesome so thank you so much do me a huge favor though because this helps everything uh, subscribe, number one. Number two, click the like button. And number three, most importantly, drop a comment down below. We read all the comments, I promise we do. We don't get a chance to answer all of them, but we do read them all. So just appreciate all the support, guys. We'll go to bed. Good night. Good morning. Well, it's about 5.30 in the morning. We got everybody up. Look, look, there's Matt. Hey, morning. Where's Canterbury? Uh, I'm pretty sure he's gone. He left at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. I heard the so he'll, he'll be back at 3. He'll be back in at 3 p.m. 3 p.m.? We'll go to the gym today. What? We'll go do CrossFit. Yeah. All right, so we're up. It's, I don't know, what time is it? 5.45? Yeah, 5.45. It's already light outside. Oh, my gosh. We do got to go. All right, I got to go. All right, so here's the deal. It's day two. What's the plan today? Plan today is to um, generate some bites. I don't care how we catch them, we just gotta generate bites. You know, we can find a little bit of a shad spawn this morning, maybe find a little area that's a little better than what we found yesterday. Um, other than that, stay in the grass maybe like 10 o'clock and then see what we can do after that. Um, you know, I don't know if you can stay in the grass all day, but we're gonna probably focus on it a little bit more today. Flipping, punching, swimming, doing some stuff like that. 
be nice to find some bluegill beds too. Good practice. Day one was pretty tough for me. I only had like six bites yesterday all day. Fish down on the lower end today. I'm gonna put in mid lake and work my way up river and uh, see if I can't generate some more bites. Game plan for me is just to try to uh, figure out how to get bed after that first thing in the morning deal. But I got to go because it's six o'clock, it's getting light, and I got to find me early. Bite. We took off this morning and I ran by this spot and there's all these white birds. You can see them there in front of me. And at the time there was like a hundred of them. And that's that's how you, you can tell the shatter spawning because there's white birds will sit there. See he's sitting there eating right now. And the bass obviously will congregate along these grass lines as well and and feed on those shad. I thought there might be a bunch more birds going south. There was a bunch yesterday. When I went five or six miles past this, I didn't see a single bird the whole way. So I've turned around and I've come back just to run this real fast, see if I can get a bite. The only issue with this is the water's real muddy from all the boat traffic. Kind of washed out a little bit. Oh, he just ate a, see, he just ate a, a shad. Water's looking a little better right here. What's crazy about the bite today is that I talked to Canterbury and he's not catching anything. Matt's not catching anything. Now the word on the street is they're not biting this morning. And his observation was that the water fell. When I look at the water, I can't tell much. I'm not used to what it used to look like. But I can see water line on the, like that seawall. But what I have learned over the years, and it is crazy, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, is that whenever on these river lakes, especially on the shore grass bite, when the water drops even just three or four or five inches, those fish just stop biting. It's crazy. It's like there's still fish, there's still bait there, there's still stuff going on, but the bass just don't feed very well at all. And um, I mean, that must be exactly what's going on right now, which is mind boggling to me that these bass just all of a sudden stop biting. I mean, there's bait there. I mean, you still got plenty of water around the grass. But it's just like it, it just makes makes them act weird. It pulls them off, and then the other thing is like it can come up in a few hours. It can come up, and all of a sudden, when it's back to high or rising, the, the bass go bonkers again in the grass. So if it does this for tournament, I need to see what the water levels are right now, and then tournament morning, I need to see are we at this same level or lower, or are we higher? If we're higher, I feel like the bite will be good, and if we're lower. I feel like it could be a problem. Yo!
What is that contraption? What is that? Who can tell me what the heck that is? I mean, that's a well thought out situation. Is it a submarine? It's got pipe fittings all over it. What is that? Maybe somebody knows what that is. I, I don't. I don't know what that is. Wow. Well, <clears throat> midday update, guys. I've got basically three. I'm not even sure I cleared the clip on that. On that one, I found another spot uh, with the jerk bait. I caught one. I don't know, pound and a half, but there was several there in that area. So. I don't know if they're all small, but it was another another little zone that had a little wad of fish. So <clears throat> that was nice. And there's more stuff there. I didn't fish it. It's a place that I've caught them before. It's crazy how it's like the same trees that I caught them a few years ago are kind of the same trees that are hot again. Um, I'm trying new stuff in between a lot of stuff, and I haven't really found a whole lot of stuff. That's new, which is kind of crazy. And definitely had a lot of fish follow it out, but I don't think all of them are are bass. Some are though, because I'll say this: I've caught several under the boat where uh, they're behind it, they're behind it, they're just like they're doing. And I've caught a few, and they've been good ones. They've been real good ones. So. Um, I think a lot of these are bass, believe it or not. I just think they're a little apprehensive. I think what I need to do is make longer casts. Because what I'm doing is I'm running out of room. Like I see the fish coming, you know, off the tree like right there. <clears throat> and then I'm right at the boat twitching it and it's just that he feels the boat. Well, it's been about like 30 minutes in this little shed right here. Big storm came. Kept looking around for like a, a safe place to get somebody's dock here. Hopefully they don't come down here and get mad at me and make me leave. But, you know, it was lightning actually pretty bad. So you got to be careful. I mean, you just don't want to get struck by lightning out here. I mean, that's, that's uh, it's not an easy one to recover from. Most people don't. So that being said, we, we've been kind of hanging out here for a little bit. Took a little... A little siesta. It was actually felt really good, and just been kind of chilling, getting a few emails knocked out, checking a few Instagram posts, all that good stuff. So you know, I haven't found much today uh, at all, really. It's weird. It's like this lake's not that big, and where I think I can get some bites. Obviously, I'm not going to go back and fish any of that stuff. I don't want even those fish to see the jerk bait anymore. So I think I can catch five. And I think, I think the potential of having some decent fish is there. I haven't caught a big one, though, but I've caught several threes. It's really going to be, depend on the weather, too. And if I can get a few bites in the morning on that grass, then, then you know, I'm ahead of, ahead of the game. If I can get a few of those frogfish to bite, that's even better. So, you know, I don't know. There's an up-to-river bite that Matt was on today, and Scott did that yesterday, and it's just not a lot of big ones. But, you know, you can catch – nine to 11 pounds up there and that's not going to win the tournament but things could get better especially after this rain that you start pulling a lot more current so we'll see what happens you know it's uh still a day and a two hours or so of practice a lot of decisions to be made between now and then but uh what's your rigging out there partner I changed the rod over. It's really bad, fishing-wise. I think the population's down. No. No? It's got plenty up there. They just know what's up, huh? No, it's weird. It's, I don't know where our timing is bad. There you go. Chef Dylan back at it again. <laughs> That's what's supposed to happen. It's supposed well, to get black. Once it's black, it good? once it's yeah, I tried a, I tried a little tip. 
Chef Dylan. <clears throat> Chef D Dylan. Kinder's barbecue sauce. That, is that the stuff? Mm-hmm. What you got? You burn some corn? No, I burn the husk on purpose. That's how you do it. Dang, that makes a mess, dude. Yeah, you got to peel in the trash can. I mean, all right. Did you do the Traeger on this? Mm-hmm. That's all I want right there. This is good barbecue sauce. Is that your smoke? I left it at the house, didn't I? Yep. I'll put the seasonings in it. That's all right. That dude right there has got it going on. That's a, a really good seasoning. I like it a lot. Cajun two-step, I've been using it. So Everglades seasoning is my other favorite. And then this Cajun two-step. It's not hot. It's got a little Cajun kick, but it's 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 it's, it's sweet. <clears throat> what you think, Scott? I 100% think that. I mean, I might be way off, but I'd like if I if I get in the 20s period, I'm not going to be dissatisfied. Try to find some bass. Be the number one go. Been pretty tough. Check a few more areas. 16 a day. Go in. Go in the whole thing. Good morning. Well, last day of practice today. We're running late. We're running late. Look how bright it is outside. It's only like 520, dude. I know, look at that. It's crazy. When can we be on the water right now? We can get, yeah, we can go on the water right now. <laughs> All right. But is it going to do you any good? I mean, we don't last off till six thirty. Huh? <clears throat> I think your theory on the on the shad spawn thing that that it's hard to catch them during the spawn, but then you come back thirty or forty minutes later after they've kind of dispersed, then you you have a chance of catching that fish. Right. Two things. Last day of practice. And we got to give Dylan a little thumbs up on the dinner last night. That was pretty Thanks. good. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Game plan so far. So <laughs> my, here's my gut feeling on, on some things. Can I catch five, you know, in that timber? Day one. I, I think. I think I can. Can I catch five out of the timber all the way to day four? I don't know. It's a it's a sketchy bite. Those fish get really tuned in. I need to I need to play around with some variations of some jerk baits today, just to see how this fish react. And you don't want to show them a bunch of stuff, but that I'm not fishing any anywhere that I've already think that I can catch one. But I do need to play with. I'm throwing a bigger jerk bait, you know, the big rogue. I need to try the smaller ones like the scout. Um, there's a mega bass, a smaller mega bass. I need to just play around with some different sizes and see if those fish will react a little bit better. I have a lot of fish chasing, so that means that they're not really super dialed in on eating that thing. I don't know what the weather conditions are going to be for tomorrow. I do need to check that. It's most likely going to be similar to what today is, which again, some afternoon thunderstorms, which will improve some of the bite for everybody if these storms come in as long as there's not bad lightning and it you know shuts us down or had to hide take shelter but i need to find some more fish up shallow i need to see did you check the water level this morning uh, yeah. we just got to figure out how to make the cut really it, it, a tournament like this where I, I it's hard for me to see a four days worth of fish that's just focus on the first two days and and make the cut and then either make adjustments accordingly or just ride what we have all the way to the end. And that's that's where we're at, you know. If we, we if we can get out of here with a really good finish, I'd be happy with that. Um, we've got a tough tournament coming up after this, but we're not even gonna talk about that yet. That's the one in Texas. That That's the one that's, it's gonna be an interesting one because we're gonna take some ch chances here. We're gonna gamble a little bit. And so if I can get out of here with a good finish, that'll give me the points that I need to make that long run, to make that gamble, try to win that tournament you know it's just going to be feast or famine type deal and that's just what we're going to have to do but that being said guys day three of practice let's get out there and try to figure out something special today these rain pants here are good for 
all day fishing. I call them my summer pants. I've got a thicker set that's good for a little bit cooler weather. But these right here are great for just summertime and morning runs. Summer rains and stuff like we have this time of the year. They're lightweight enough and comfortable. Alright. Let's go mode. Let's go mode. Oh my gosh, dude, that's a five pounder. Holy smokes, dude. Hey. I said a five pounder, dude. Good. Straight up five pounder. Like, it, it, I picked up a fluke. I tied a fluke on. I threw it out there on this point, dude, and I ran it through there real fast, dude, and one swirled on it and missed it. I was like, no, that's cool. I said, well, let me just keep So I picked up my jig. I threw one more cast with the fluke, nothing. And then I picked up my jig, dude, and I threw it up there. Dude, he freaking smacked, hit it at the boat, dude. I watched the whole thing. It was a five pound fish, 100%. All right, guys, so we've got one bite so far. That was a good stop right there. That was a couple things. One is it's a new spot. Two, I got bit on the three quarter, I'm sorry, the three eighths Guggen jig which is a really good one. I, I trimmed the skirt up just a hair. I want it to not have such a bulky profile. Yeah, I, I, I like it a little more thin. It just flows a little better, so I thinned it out just a hair. Trimmed it a little short, too. Um, just got a little white. Actually, a speed crawl on this. I was gonna go with a the Guggen one, but it, it, this is a little different action. Right now, that shad spawn. During the spawn, bass spawn, I like I like that bigger profile legs. I'll be Googling one, but real fast, real fast shad spawn stuff. Those tails of the shad are just, I mean, shad are going like this. I like that frequency of the, of the speed crawl. Get the Googling one, the Googling trailer crawl. Oh, there's another one. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. We point that one too. He didn't get it good, but that's all right. That's all right. You know, lures are tools. Everybody, oh yeah. You know, do you just use Guggen baits? I use Guggen baits all the time. I use the Vandita bug. It's on the deck of my boat every day of the week and forever. Um, the Guggen jig I use a bunch. But lures are tools, guys. I and I use it all. When you fish tournaments, there's different moods these fish get in. There's different types of water we fish traveling around the country like this. And there's applications for lots of lures. So I'm a, I'm a tackle junkie. I mean, I just literally use all this stuff. And um, my wife always gets mad at me. She's like, why do you buy so much stuff? I'm on Tackle Warehouse all the time ordering things. I was at a gas station last night getting gas and they had this weird... I gotta show it to you. It's really crazy. And the only reason I bought it, the only reason I bought it is because, let me see where it is. Yeah, look at this thing, guys. It's $23. Look at the blade on that thing. It's a jackal, which makes good stuff. Look at that thing. Chop Cut Junior. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea why I bought that. That's one reason I like the Mr. Tackle Box because I get all these cool things every month. And a lot of this stuff that I just didn't know anything about. 
All right, so now, I don't know if I was rolling or not. I don't really know if I even saved that clip, but right around this corner here, I was getting ready to leave and go run points. And then boom, I got smoked by about a three pounder in the grass. So that's two bites, two good ones for sure. A, you know, a four or five pounder and, a, and, a, and a, I think a three. And then one more bite that I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just I mean, at the very least it was small. So that's two bites in an hour. Not bad, like two catchable fish. one yeah. little baby huh okay it's kind of cool Cool. It's kind of cool. I'll do that. Dude, okay. Holy crap, dude. Just changed the game, dude. This just changed the game. Two and a half pounder. Okay. Made a Hail Mary run up here, guys. Two reasons. One, to see if I can figure out how to catch. Some keepers real quick. And B, get it out of my system if I can't. So, that's what we're gonna do. A lot of current. 20 miles up the river. I just, you just never know. It'd be nice to have another option. Friday they're gonna stop pulling current. On the lower end, it could freak everything out. I don't even know, I really don't. So that being said, let's just see what happens here. 613. Gosh, dang, I had one. Holy crap. Let's 
Got it. Uh, what's that? Oh my gosh, I wasn't paying attention. One freaking smashed it. Yeah, so quick practice recap here on Lay Lake. Never been here before. Beautiful lake, uh, tons of shallow water targets to fish. The water's a little bit low, so I think it's hurting a little bit, but um, overall, not a very good practice. I, I mean, I'm, I, I can generate a lot of bites, but I am not, I'm very concerned about the size and the quality of the fish that I'm gonna crack on tomorrow. So um, hopefully early I can get one or two quality bites, and a quality bite, three plus pounder, you know, that's a quality bite. Um, I think I can catch eight or nine pounds, you know, but uh, I think you're going to need an 11 to 13 range to have a good tournament, probably 14 to 16 a day to have a shot at winning. So I'm going to have to get lucky to get in that mid-teens. Um, but that's the goal, and uh, you never know. Tomorrow is a new day, and uh, hopefully we can generate a couple big bites. You know, I mean, we just finished up three days of practice here on Lay Lake, and uh, it's been pretty tough. The, the bite's been tough. The lake's a little low. Um, the lake's got a lot of fish in it. I do know that because I live here, but uh, it's just been fishing a little bit off for this week. I mean, just got through spawning, the shad spawns winding up, and uh, I expect it to be a little bit of a tough bite, but hopefully we'll get get a couple early in the morning, swimming a jig. I'm going to swim a jig like I always do here, flip grass. That's uh, the way I think you need to fish to try to win the tournament, and uh, hopefully we'll catch five, five good ones tomorrow. I'm, uh, anything in the teens is going to be a good day for me. If I can just get in those teens, you get in those upper teens, you really got to put yourself in position then. So uh, that's what we're shooting for. Anything in the teens will be a great day. Come here, Oh, you're quite welcome. Listen, that's why I like that lady and this one right here. Don't worry about that gentleman. That lady right there, them two, they prepared all this food for you all. Really? Oh, yeah, oh my yeah. gosh. I'm so, oh, I've yeah. been eating all day on, on purpose. Oh, yeah. I did. I, I didn't even bring a sandwich in the boat. Oh, yeah. But, but so. look, you all eat all here, of it. I'll just take this right here. Yeah, I'm good. Be good. Just give me a that'll fork. Just give me a fork. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh yeah. brownies? No. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. That one too. Looks good. Really? Okay. Let me make a plate. Let me say hi to everybody. Well, how far is it? Every bit of 20 miles. Every bit of 20 miles. What's the weather tomorrow? No. At one o'clock tomorrow on the lower end, they're four. cutting four turbines on. They're gonna be some current down there. They did it today only for one hour though. That was good dinner right there. Now. Oh my gosh. So I gotta go rig tackle. I gotta spend at least at least stayed on the water till eight o'clock. Yeah, I did. That off day sure would be nice right now, wouldn't it? Nah, I'd be all right. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Start off in the morning like this. This is this is how I'm gonna start my day. Oh, hang on, hang it. Start my day off like this. <laughs> Are you talking to yourself? Yeah. And then and then I'm gonna finish up the day like this. That this bad. That bad. and this. That's the only two <laughs> motions tomorrow. Look, McCoy, you trying to watch a hockey game? I'm going to throw some <laughs> stuff away. Yeah. A little Grass Hero jig. We're going to put her to work in the morning. Made two good bites on it today. Hopefully we can get three or four bites on it in the morning. It would be nice to get five bites. Which could happen. We're going to go frog a little bit. And then we're gonna start jerk baiting on that, on that timber stuff. So, you know, I, I feel good about tomorrow, and I feel good about the next day actually. Um, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure how I stretch this for four days, to be honest with you. I mean, if the water comes up over the weekend, which Canterbury kind of thinks it may, um, the jig bite could really get good, like an all-day type situation, which which would be fine. Then if that happens, I just roll with that all day long and 
you can catch a nice bag of fish on this lake for sure. So I'm excited about getting out there. I, I you know, it's one of those tournaments where I've got several options. I've got spotted bass, jerkbait fish, uh, frog fish, swim jig fish, maybe up the river fish. So you know, we 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 formulated a little bit of a game plan, the best one that I could come up with, and uh, we're gonna call this one a grinder. This one's gonna be a grinder for sure, but. Um, you know, it'd be nice if I could bust at 16, 17 pounds in the morning. And uh, if I do that, I'll roll everything up and just go around and practice the rest of the day because I don't want to burn anything. If I can manage everything that I have just right. And look, here's the deal. I'm like this close, literally, from a big bag all the time because that jerk bait, those fish are following it. They're coming after it. They're just not committing to it. So I need to play around. I put a different color on tonight, today actually. Caught one or two on it. Just need to mix it up a little bit. If I can unlock that perfect little color combination, cadence, you know, now that I know where they are, I can make long casts, kind of anticipate getting a bite in some of these places because I know they're there. You know, if I, if I can if I can finagle those fish to bite, I think we can have a pretty good pretty good bag of spots, which would be kind of fun. So that's it, guys. Three days of practice is wrapped up in the books. Really appreciate Leander and his wife and, and uh, their son to open their house up for us and let us stay there. They brought some great food over tonight. So we're going to get up in the morning, guys. We're going to day one of the tournament's going to start. We're going to leave you with that. This video is officially over. And I thank you so much for watching all of our videos. I know there's a lot of content out there to watch these days. So really, truly thank you for uh, supporting us like you have. We're going we're gonna to close this thing down. The next video in the series is going to be day one of Lay Lake Elite Series. Stop number five. And uh, we're going to get after it as hard as we can, guys. So good night.